Hi, this is Tim Hinton, the beast of the marching arts. I'm the host of the Marching Roundtable podcast and the creator of MarchingArtsEducation.com. Thanks for being here at our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe so you can see exclusive live interviews, plus excerpts from podcasts, webinars, and interviews from live events. This is really the best way to find out what you might want to go back to our website and see an entire conversation. Thanks for being here. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel. Hey everybody, this is Tim Hinton from Marching Arts Education. You are going to love this conversation. Imagine that you had a show idea that involved robots and then but you're like, I'd love to have a real robot on the field. But then, you know, the next thing that happens is you go, no, that's not possible. That's that can't possibly. Well, all right. Granite City High School band actually made it happen. So we are going to talk to them today. Wyatt Roberts, how are you, sir? Hey, we're doing great. Why is the band director at Granite City in Granite City, um, Illinois. Wyatt, introduce everybody that's there with you today. Great. Uh, first, we have Amy Heath. Uh, she's our robotics team sponsor. Uh, we have Ava Hoppy. This is our robot uh, build team and driver. And then we have Fred Sansusi, and he is our robot project, our project manager and also one of our trumpet players. This is absolutely fantastic. And everybody, look behind them because <laughs> – there it is, like it's it's amazing and so cool. I'm so excited about this conversation. So Wyatt, let's just start with the obvious thing. Where did this idea come from, this show idea? And then uh, we'll get into how you actually brought this robot to life. Sure, uh, we, we actually got this show from um, Lewis Norfleet. Uh, he's the, the composer. Uh, we, we'd seen several bands around the country do it. Uh, we thought it would be a really cool show to come back from COVID with. Um, and so we started, you know, brainstorming about show concepts. And as I was talking uh, here in the band room one day, one of our freshmen, uh, Anna Forbes, uh, she's a sophomore percussionist, said, hey, uh, I'm on the robotics team and we could build a robot. It's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And she's like, yeah, I think we could do it. So uh, it kind of all went from there. It, it all kind of came from the kids. So it was a really cool thing. So I'm assuming the next thing that happened is you check in with Amy, uh, Amy Heath, the science teacher and robotics team sponsor. Amy, is that the next thing that happened? Yes, actually, Anna came back to the group and we were still in the process of um, our competition for the state. We had advanced to state with FIRST. We're a part of FIRST FTC, FIRST Tech Challenge Robotics. And we were in state competition still working on our robot and getting ready to compete. And she came with this idea. And um, the team was super jazzed about it. And and uh, we knew that it was gonna be a big task because our robots are 18 inches by 18 inches and they may expand um, larger out in the field, but they are nothing large enough to be seen on a football field. So we knew that we were in for a challenge, but the kids were super excited about it. Okay, well, I have to tell you, like, I I think it's so, I, I, I mean, I don't know much about the world of robotics and teams and competitions and everything, but, like, the fact that you do that is already really, really cool. But then you decided to take this on. So, so uh, Amy, what happened next? Like, how did you guys decide, like, how did you end up with Ava being the, you know, Ava and Fred getting involved? Well, ironically, he's in the band, Fred's in the band, Ava's on the robotics team. Um, And Ava's always been a part of our build team, but Fred was an eighth grader coming from the junior high. And we started working at the end of the school year and brought him over. And he is a pro at CAD. Um, He's worked and built small robots on his own before. His knowledge is pretty incredible. And he was extremely interested in jumping off with some type of design and ironically, the Ava is the name of the robot in the movie Ex Machina, and her name is Ava. And she was so heavily involved, she we decided that she would be the driver. And um, honestly, we already had started doing a little research about how to build a robot on this scale. And honestly, there's nothing out there. There are no kits. There's nobody to guide you. And Fred, who was only a fresh coming in freshman, started making phone calls to companies and discussing motors and what their capabilities would be and what kind of electronic board, computer board would we need. And he really CAD designed it before we could even realize that he had done all this. 
he designed this robot from the ground up as far as the mechanics and the electronics of it. So Fred, do you want to tell them like kind of what you're, what you jumped off and did yeah. right away? <clears throat> so I went into one of the meetings and it was very cool to start off with, but the fact that they needed this, it was just something that I was super interested in. So I just said, hey, I can help with this. So like she said, I did call companies. Um, I figured a lot of things out trying to figure out how to design and and I just went off from there and designed the entire chassis of this. And he had to figure out how much power we needed. You know, he really, there's, the, I think the, what was interesting is listening to his phone conversations with these companies was pretty interesting because you have a 14 year old young man calling professionals and they were just super wowed by the fact that he was trying to figure out all the componentry and how to get a motor that would give him un, enough speed and power and what kind of drivetrain we were going to use, how we were going to move this bot. And he CAD designed it before any of us could really do much more planning and had done all the research. It was pretty incredible. Fred, that's like really impressive, like to do that so young, to take that initiative. So that's really cool. So for those of us that aren't robotic people or really very sciencey, can you sort of lay out in really layman's terms, you and Ava maybe together help me do this, like, what are the pieces of a puzzle of building a robot, especially one that you want to have move around on the field? So one thing that we really had to look out were the motors. We searched and searched and searched until we found like the perfect motors. And we really haven't had any trouble with those. After that, you have to have the chassis, which is like what the body of it sits on for at least this robot. Um, and then after that, we had, well, all the, yes, the wheels. Um, which are powered with the chain and the the gear. Yeah, so <laughs> we have these have motors mounted. It's just a square like frame almost. You can think of it as a frame. It's just what the body sits on. It's only what drives. So you just have motors that kind of go out. They go through gears and everything, and then they have chains that go out to four wheels on each corner, and that's how it drives. And then this entire body was made with sheet metal, and, which we machined ourselves. Yeah. They, yeah, I wasn't even here for that. They machined the body and they got that all cut and designed and folded and everything. And then we just have um, a piece of culvert, actually. It's just like a tube that we just use. A pipe in the middle yeah. from, that was donated by a local construction company. Yeah, and then we have just two main electronic boards and then that powers all of our driving and all of our lights. And the dome. And then the dome. plastic dome, which is mounted with 3D printed parts, actually. <clears throat> The other thing is there's another robotics coach. Um, he's the vocational um, department chair at our school, Mr. Laycock, and he helped with a lot of the actual body design, the sheet metal cutting, um, but the kids did it. I will tell you, the kids do all of this. I'm not a robotics expert. They, I just provide um, the services to make sure they get what they need and, um, and try to find resources. For instance, the computer board, use a language that they've never programmed in, C Sharp. So our programmer who isn't sitting here, we brought in, we reached out on Facebook and find, found a local grad whose fiance is a programmer and brought him in and he was completely, bought, he, he bought in and he helped these kids get this program started, the programming, the code, and uh, that was an outreach. The electronics are just extremely complicated inside to get these lights working and so, we reached out to a local robotics team because their coach is an electrical engineer and he came in and met with these guys and worked with them on his own time three evenings um, so we have had to learn to ask for help um, when we didn't know what we were doing and uh, that's really hard sometimes so why my next question is for you number one when you hear c sharp does that make you cringe as a musician <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> Second off, why your whole community is part of this? Like this, does your whole community know that so many people have been contributing to make this happen? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I know that we've advertised uh, that. We we definitely thanked everyone. Um, at, at the local football games, this robot has made appearances on the field. At, at competitions, I've had people come up to me and ask to take pictures with it. Like. People, people ask to like take pictures with the robot. I've had like so the plan is actually for the homecoming football game 
where we know we have a, a pretty large uh, gathering to have an actual booth with um, basically schematics of the, the CAD drawings and the things they've learned and the componentry of the robot and have the robot there so people can come up, children, adults can talk to all the robotics members because this isn't it. There's a whole group of people involved with this robot that are not sitting here. And uh, at homecoming, we hope to be able to, to bridge that gap and talk to people, even little kids, about robotics. So sure. it'll be a great time for us to have all the outreach that we need and uh, just to, to really sell the band program and the robotics team uh, to the community. Um, it'll, de it'll definitely help both teams, I think, really grow. I think it's fantastic. And I can tell you that just spitballing here, if you ask everybody to get their pay a dollar to get their picture with a robot, you could probably pay for your whole next year's show. <laughs> I can tell you, I would pay a dollar to have my picture with that. I have a question now. Anybody, you're the driver? Like, I have no idea what that means. Like, are you are you with the thing? Are you across the field? Like, how does that work? We I use this controller right here, and I, I'm actually across the field. I'm with percussion. The pit now is in the back of the field. I stand right in front of them on the 50 yard line, and that's where I drive it from. Um, I've never, I'm not in band. I just kind of offered to do this, but I really like the experience that I've gotten out of it so far. They're trying to convert her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't wait to see what's coming on next year, but I will jump ahead. Uh, so, Ava, is it like a video game console or something? Like, how are the, what do the controls look like? So, it's technically a drum controller, but I mean, yeah, it, it looks like a video game console. I use, there's these two little um, pegs. Come on up close and show us if you don't mind. Okay. It's so hard. It's okay. <laughs> so there's these two joysticks. Do you see these, the red? I do that. Yeah, yeah there you go. See it. Yeah. So to go forward, they both have to be pushed forward. To go back, I go both back. And to turn it, one goes forward, one goes back. Because we have it set up for a zero degree turn. And the lights, the lights were a challenge because actually they were trying to um, wire the lights directly. And of course, that's where the challenge began. And so the lights right now are on a separate remote, but they really don't need to be. We just haven't gotten back into the robot. The lights that they purchased, he was genius enough to figure out that red on the, on the wiring is really not red. After hours of basic stuff found out that all the wiring in the lights is actually not by what you would think it is. It's all backwards. And so we could go in now and program it directly into, into this remote, which is what we originally had, but we haven't had a moment to go back and, and eliminate this remote. So for right now, they're using both remotes. So. so there's a separate team member that's doing the lights? No, no it's just all me. You're, you do both at the same time? Yeah. Have you crashed in anybody yet? No. Uh, Not that I'm doubting your skills as a driver. But maybe one time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's banned. Yeah. Somebody got crashed into. We all know this happened. All right. Anyway, so Wyatt, how, tell us about the show. Like, how does the robot fit into your show? Like, how does that work? Sure. Uh, so the show is based on the, uh, the 2014 movie Ex Machina, very loosely, uh, basically where humans interact with artificial intelligence. Uh, the first movement of the show is where you see the two, uh, the humans and the artificial intelligence or robot, uh, start to interact a little bit. Uh, the second movement, you see the colors on the robot change to a softer blue, um, and, and the music, um, it's the ballad. So you, you kind of see them hopefully start to fall in love or, or try to, the robot try to become more human. Uh, in the third movement, uh, there's a part where the, it speeds up a little bit, and we see that um, the robot has realized that it's never going to be human, so it gets angry and starts to take over the world. Um, so color-wise, it, it changes to red at that point. Uh, alarms start sounding, uh, and usually that's that's kind of where the crowd loses their mind. So uh, you can kind of see the, the colors on the robot here. Um, Wait, so, so give us a demonstration, guys. So I want to do this. Wait a minute. Ava and Fred, could you guys stand up and go to the sides of the robot? Yeah. And that way you're not blocking the view. No, leave the lights out if you could. That was really cool. Yeah, now I can see. Now, give us a demonstration. Like, tell us what's going on. Yeah, the first movement, this is just standing. You're 
it's just sitting at the back of the field. It's like he said, it's just the beginning where everything kind of starts fitting together. And so that it's one in the entire first movement. And the second movement where it changes to that kind of softer, slower music, it turns blue. So it's a, more, a little more happy. It's trying to kind of get there. And then at the second or third movement, that's when it changes to red. Red. Because <laughs> that's when it gets mad. It, doesn't, it can't be human. And so that's when it gets angry. And then that's when it starts moving and coming out into the field. Can you make him? Yeah. Yeah. And so then. Not too much space. To yeah, come forward. I don't want to hit anyone. Oh, no, come on. What do you mean? You already hit me once with her. So. <laughs> She moves faster than this, yeah. like at drill pace, right? Yeah. Yep. She moves at a speed of what did you calculate, Fred? I think three point feet. So on a metronome, uh, with the metronome set at 160, she keeps up at an eight to five step. It's really pretty cool. <laughs> that is really fast. Yeah. Yeah, it'll fly. Well, they have her turned down. Yeah. She was really moving when they first built the chassis. So. So switch, flip the lights around a little bit. Let's have a little light show here. <laughs> so you know you can rent this thing out for parties now, right? That is fantastic. I love it. I think Fred needs to take her to prom. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's awesome. I we're just really excited to have this time to, to collaborate with the robotics team to make sure that we you know spread the message of steam um, and, and get that out to the community and just show that you know we're all on the same team we're all working for a common vision common goal um, we definitely enjoy entertaining our audience and uh, and the audience I, I must say has really appreciated this show they've they've enjoyed it I love it. You know, Amy, this is this is what band programs try to do all the time is bring in all the different parts of the school to collaborate and everything. So I appreciate that you're doing that. You're an example. You guys are like a, a test case here of how this can work to a really high level. It was a lot of time. The kids have lots of hours invested, but I think we have grown as a team and I'm excited about our robotic season getting ready to start also because I feel like we have seasoned these young people on our team to become a really fabulous uh, FTC team for first. So we're super excited about that. I was in this marching band when I was in high school. I spent a lot of time in this room. Um, I wasn't a fabulous musician, uh, but I'm telling you what, it's exciting to be back involved with the band in some capacity. Um, and uh, I know how much hard work band is, but I think Ava, yeah. can attest that she had no idea i yeah i've truly learned how much like work goes into the show i never knew before i used to just watch it you know but now i get to be at practices and i'm here like all the time working on the robot or with it and i've really just come to learn how much how much hard work they really put into it it's fantastic so fred did any of those companies that you called to ask for advice did anybody offer you a job yet <laughs> no, none of, unfortunately, none of them have. There's a gentleman at um, what's the name? Of CTR Electronics. CTR Electronics. Oh, they know God. his voice, I think. Yeah, Shout out to him. We've talked to him a lot, Jacob. If you're watching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's been a lot of help. He's, I mean, he's been on the phone for probably four hours total um, working on this, just because of electronics has been yeah. a difficult part of this. But we've got him. Do you know? Have they come to see it? They have not. I don't no, know but that's that. probably our job. We need yeah. to reach out. And now that's one of the things that we have learned. Sure. That you have to learn how to market your, your, your team and our band. I mean, these are things we have to learn how to do. Yeah. Become um, our own uh, voices for our group. And sometimes we just are so busy working and doing the things you forget to do those things. So. Absolutely. But why you did it by reaching out to us. And, and sharing the story and now we're going to be putting this on the broadcast so you you're you're starting to do that's great i think you should make sure that everybody that's had some sort of part of this gets invited to see it at some point because i think that would be really cool to sort of get them together and let them see this image did you give the robot a name 
Yeah, it has the same name as me. It's Ava. Um, in the movie, its name is also Ava. So it kind of makes perfect works. sense. And by the way, everybody, I'm a huge Oscar Isaac fan. That is a great film. So if you haven't seen it, um, go go see it, and then you'll think of Granite City and their their Ava. So it's amazing. All right, Wyatt. Anything you want to say before we go? Uh, we, we have two last opportunities, two more shows to see it at. Uh, we go to Fort Zumwalt North this weekend, and then University of Illinois' uh, Illinois Marching Band Championships on October 23rd. So everybody come on out and check it out. It should be a great show. This is the show to see. Fred, what do you want to see, say before we go? Um, this has been a very exciting opportunity for me. I mean, just getting into marching band, getting into robotics. It's just, I mean, it's been overwhelming to be honest. It's been, it's been amazing. Um, to just to be with the band, to be with the robot and then to have them together. That's just, it's a once in a lifetime thing. It's amazing. Well, the idea that you could do something like this and then it's part of your show that you're out there marching around, like, I think that's really cool. How about you, Ava, what do you want to say? I think I've learned um, how hard I can push myself through this project. All the countless hours that I've put into this, my whole summer. Um, I've really like, I've learned a lot about Fred. We're here like all the time. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I've just learned how hard I can push myself. And she's become a good leader. Yes. Um, yeah, also, thank both you. of them have developed a lot of leadership skill. Well, Amy, do you want to say anything before we go? The only thing I'd like to say is thank you for to Wyatt and the marching band and those band parents who quite honestly had to make a home for the robot on the traveling trailer. Um, they have had to, you know, the band parents do so much. And I know that they have helped these kids a lot with this robot. Um, and I and I thank them and the band and these kids and the rest of my team for putting in all the hard work um, that they have that they have put in. and. I think they're parents. I can't tell you how many times the parents are waiting at eight o'clock at night. Are you ready for me to pick you up yet? No, not yet. So I think they're all of their parents for being patient and being transporters of these human beings to and from our high school at odd hours of the evening. So anyway. Well, this is one of the great things about school and about band and about all of this, you know, like you spend time, you learn how to work hard, you work, work as a team. Um, it's the stuff that the robotics team and band are all teaching our students. And so I think it's awesome. And Ava and Fred, I want to say, man, congratulations and thank you to you and everybody on your team. Say on behalf of us, I'll speak on behalf of the whole marching arts community. We love that you spend all this time because shows are way more work than most people know. And I'm glad that we could sort of talk about that today. And I appreciate all your time. Of course. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. This, yeah. is, this means a lot. Absolutely. And Wyatt, thanks for reaching out to us. This was a great conversation. Sure. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for, for having us. I appreciate it.